What it do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shiny B Gaming, and today we're going to be covering the CSIS Whirlpool 8.8 .8 patch notes coming out today, August 24th. First, we're going to be going over the item changes, the god changes, Charybdis' kit, the new skins coming to the game, and then a few changes to Joust and Conquest. I will be adding a lot of Charybdis and new skin content from the Odyssey event in this upcoming week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and check back for some more content. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. First up, we have the item changes. For the support starter items, War Flag, Sentinel's Gift, and Benevolence now only require 1,250 gold to upgrade to their starter upgrades. This is in addition to them only requiring level 17. Bracer of Radiance now has new artwork. Increase the movement speed of Aura from 10% to 15%. Bracer of Radiance upgrade. Increase the movement speed of Aura from 10% to 15%. Increase the power Aura from 10% to 15%. Sundering Spear, increase the cooldown from 110 seconds to 125 seconds. Sundering Spear Upgrade, increase the cooldown from 110 seconds to 125 seconds. Decrease the damage amplification from 10% to 7%. Charon's Coin, decrease the magical power from 80 to 70. This change also applies to the evolved form. Frostbound Hammer, decrease the health from 300 to 250. Decrease the movement speed slow from 30% to 25% for melee attacks and decrease the movement speed slow from 20% to 15% from ranged attacks. Jade Emperor's Crown. Increase the physical power reduction from 20 to 25. Hide of the Nemean Lion. Increase physical protections from 75 to 80. Decrease the protections needed per stack of the block from 120 to 100, which is a revert to a previous change. Bulwark of Hope. I think this is the largest buff in the patch. Increase the magical protections from 60 to 80. This shield provided by Bulwark of Hope will now be based on 15% of the holder's maximum health rather than the 150 plus 10 per level. I think it's the biggest change because it's receiving 20 additional magical protections. And then let's say your support or solo laner has 5,000 health. Let's say your support or solo laner has about 5,000 health. Late game, this shield is going to be about 750 compared to the like 350. So all around, pretty substantial change. Stone of Fall, increase the health from 150 to 200, increase the physical protections from 30 to 40, increase the magical protections from 30 to 40, increase the passive buff from 2% to 3% per stack. Blackthorn Hammer, increase the physical power from 30 to 40, increase the health from 350 to 400. Staff of Mirden, increase the duration of the passive from 4 seconds to 6 seconds. Dominance, increase the basic attack bonus penetration from 10% to 15%. Vampiric Shroud, decrease the magical power from 30 to 25. Blood Soak Shroud, decrease the health heal proc from 2% to 1.5%. Decrease the mana heal proc from 2% to 1.5%. Conduit Gem, increase the magical power from 25 to 30. Mannequin Scepter, there is now some extra forgiveness for the health restore when an enemy dies shortly after burn debuff fades. This should help this item feel more consistent when spreading the burn around on multiple targets during the early jungle clear. Bumba's Dagger, increase the basic attack damage on jungle camps from 20 to 25. Increase ability damage on jungle camps from 30 to 35%. Increase the ability damage on jungle camps from 30% to 35%. Bumba's Hammer, increase the cooldown from 10% to 20%. Bumba's Spear, no longer provides 200 health, now provides 10% penetration. Increase the physical power from 60 to 70. Increase the magical power from 90 to 105. Increase the power buff duration from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. Protector of the Jungle, increase the passive power from 12% to 15%, the protections remain at 12%, increase the physical power from 55 to 65, increase the magical power from 80 to 100. Seer of the Jungle, increase physical power from 60 to 70, increase magical power from 90 to 105, increase the passive duration from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Gilded Arrow, decrease the cost from 700 to 650, increase the basic attack damage from 15 to 20. War Flag, increase gold reward from 8 to 10. Benevolence, decrease the experience in gold earned from any time you would gain either resource from slain enemies from 90% to 85%. The full lost reward still goes to any ally within 40 units of you, so that's getting buffed from 10% to 15%. Animosity, decrease the damage proc from 4% of your maximum health to 3% of your maximum health. Up next, we're going to be going over the god changes. First up, for the god changes, we have Tiamat, Consume, decrease the magical power scaling from 60% to 50%. Outburst, decrease the magical power scaling from 50% to 40%. Raijin, Raiju, decrease bounce tick damage, it was 14 at level 1. 
50 at level 5, now it's going to be 14 at level 1, 42 at level 5. Jormungandr, increased basic attack damage from 10.4 to 11.2. Venomous Haze, increased base damage per tick from it was 5 at level 1, 45 at level 5, now it's going to be 10 at level 1, 50 at level 5. Consuming Bellow, increased magical power scaling of bonus damage from 5% to 10% per stack. This can stack up to 3 times. Increase the duration of the empowered basic attack from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds per stack. This can stack up to 3 times. Bologna, Shield Bash, increased physical power scaling from 40% to 50%. Decreased cooldown from 15 seconds to 14 seconds. Scourge, decreased cooldown, it was 20 at level 1, 16 at level 5. Now it's going to be 18 at level 1, 14 at level 5. Amaterasu, increased basic attack speed per level from 1.2 to 1.4%. Glorious Charge, decreased the cooldown from 18 seconds to 16 seconds. Scotty, Rune of the Hunt, increased Calder's basic attack damage. It was 40 at level 1, 80% at level 5. Now it's going to be 50% at level 1, 80% at level 5. Permafrost, decreased the cooldown from 18 seconds to 16 seconds. Thoth, Glyph of Pain, increased base bonus basic attack power from it was 10 at level 1, 30 at level 5, now it's going to be 20 at level 1, 40 at level 5. Baba Yaga is receiving a quality of life. This god came out so long ago and they're still finding little bugs and ways to make her just play smoother. Her ultimate, home sweet home. While in the ultimate, Baba Yaga can now walk through minions. Susano, Wind Siphon, increased base damage, it was 80 at level 1, 180 at level 5, now it's going to be 90 at level 1, 210 at level 5. Jetstream, increased base damage, it was 20 at level 1, 60 at level 5, now it's going to be 25 at level 1, 65 at level 5 per tick. Ardeo, Life Tap, and Maul Prey, decreased the cooldown from 12 seconds to 10 seconds. Heavy Charge, increased her charge speed, it was 75% increased movement speed, now it's going to be 100% increased movement speed. Kuzumbo, Nene Kappa, increased base damage on the throw, it was 70 at level 1, 210 at level 5, now it's going to be 80 at level 1, 240 at level 5. Neja, Flaming Spear, decreased the cooldown, it was 18 at level 1, 14 at level 5, now it's going to be 14 seconds at all ranks. And then there's the hotfix which is already in the game. Benevolence, decreased the base gold per 5 seconds from 3 to 1, decreased the gold per 5 seconds per level from 0.5 to 0.3. Up next, we're going to be going over Charybdis and her abilities. Charybdis' passive, Raging Tides. Charybdis' attack speed increases as her tide increases. Successful basic attack hits increase her tide. Charybdis deals less damage with item effect procs. The tide attack speed is going to be 10 plus 0.75 per level at max tide. The item reduction is reduced by 35%. The basic attacks are going to restore 2% tide on hit. Charybdis' is 1, Spike Shot. Charybdis reveals the Maw and fires large spikes for a short duration dealing basic attack damage. These projectiles pass through minions and are wider and faster than normal basic attacks. On hitting enemy gods and walls, the spikes splinter dealing additional damage. The minion damage at level 1 is going to be 60% and then at level 5 it's going to be 100%. The splinter damage is 10 at level 1, 30 at level 5 plus 10% of your physical power. The Splinter Tide is going to be 2% Tide per hit, the duration is 4 seconds, it's going to cost 50 mana at level 1, 70 at level 5, and the cooldown is 14 seconds. Charybdis is 2, Capsize. Charybdis absorbs water from around her before firing a quick blast from the Maw. Enemies are hit by a rapidly decaying slow and physical protection debuff. This ability can be channeled for longer, consuming Tide on fire to become wider, strengthening the buff effects and dealing more damage. Up to 40% of the Tide is going to be consumed. The damage is going to be 80 at level 1, 280 at level 5, plus 85% of your physical power. The extra scaling is going to be 30%. The slow is going to be 40% on max tide. The physical protection reduction is 40% on max tide. The duration is 4 seconds on max tide. It's going to cost 60 mana at level 1, 80 mana at level 5. The cooldown is 16 seconds at level 1, 12 seconds at level 5. Crib, this is 3. Whirlpool form. Charybdis dives into a whirlpool, she creates expanding revealing the terrifying maw. Charybdis moves faster and deals damage to enemies caught in the area. This ability can be amplified by toggling it again and spending 30% tide. Doing so increases the damage dealt and movement speed as well as providing extra damage and a knockup upon exiting. While submerged, Charybdis is untargetable and immune to damage for up to 3 seconds. The damage is nothing to ride home about. It is 10 at level 1, 30 at level 5 plus 5% 5 of your physical power every 0.5 seconds. The amplified damage is 20 at level 1, 60 at level 5 plus 10% of your physical power every 0.5 seconds. 
The exit damage is 60 at level 1, 220 at level 5, plus 65% of your physical power. The base movement speed is going to be 20%. The amplified movement speed is going to be 40%. It's going to cost 70 mana at level 1, 90 mana at level 5, and the cooldown is 17 seconds at level 1, 15 seconds at level 5. And finally, Cryptus's ultimate, the Maw Hungers. Cryptus reveals her true nature, becoming immune to crowd control for the next 6 seconds and gaining movement speed. She may make one powerful attack as the Maw charges forward, damaging and carrying back enemies hit before chomping down, damaging again and stunning. If she kills an enemy god with the attack, she gains another for 6 seconds and may attack again. The charge damage is 60 at level 1, 180 at level 5, plus 20% of your physical power. The bite damage is 300 at level 1, 700 at level 5, plus 150% of your physical power. The movement speed increase is 35%. The stun duration is 1.3 seconds. It's going to cost 100 mana, and the cooldown is 90 seconds. Up next, we're going to be going over the skins coming out this patch. These first three skins are already in the game. They came out in the 8-7 bonus balance. Won't spend too much time on them. Then we have three Cryptus skins, the Standard Recolor, the Season Pass 2021 Recolor, and then the Mastery skins. They all look pretty solid. They look like Cryptus. Nothing too special about them. Then we have the Mystic Magus Raw, which is exclusive to the Odyssey. The Kiro Kiro Danzabora, which is also exclusive to the Odyssey event. The Toon Mania Cthulhu is the Tier 5 skin you get for getting enough points in the Odyssey event. And this is a very cool tier 5 skin. I played it in PTS and it's the best tier 5 skin they've released in a really long time. We have Neath's biggest fan, Zong Kui, which I think is just a great concept. The Valhalla Vice Heimdallir, which is probably my favorite skin of the patch other than the Toon Mania. We have Classic Bacchus, which is going to be part of the calendar event. The Zong Kui and the Heimdallir skin are both Odyssey. We have the Draconic Devastator Thanatos, which is going to be an exclusive to the Odyssey. We have the Sakura Android Neath, which is going to be exclusive to the Sakura chest. And then the Malwarm Jormungandr, which is going to be a Odyssey reward. I think this Jormungandr skin looks sick. Really cool concept. And the last thing we're going to be covering is the changes to Joust and the changes to Conquest. For Joust, the Chinese Joust map, the Season 3 map, is going to return. This is the Joust map I learned Smite on. Definitely my favorite of the three. It's going to replace both Joust and Duel for normal and co-op ranked matches. The classic Joust remains available for custom lobbies. The Season 3 Joust changes, Death's Toll and Benevolence are unavailable to buy in this map. Increased XP split bonus from 0 0.0 to 0.65. Added out of combat boost to Fountain during the setup phase. Mana Camp Turtles can now be hit during their intro once they bury out of the ground. The Bull Demon King can now be hit during his intro as soon as he lands. Damage Camp now uses Jade Corruption Tiger Skins. Reduce the volume of some looping ambient sounds. So nothing too crazy. For Conquest, we actually have some substantial changes. The Buff Drop Rules, Reverted Pickup Behavior, Picking Up an Enhanced Buff with an Enhanced Buff Equipped is going to have the normal enhanced effects are both going to be refreshed. Picking up a normal buff with an enhanced buff equipped, normal effects are going to be refreshed. Picking up an enhanced buff with a normal buff equipped, normal effects are going to be refreshed. The support buff will no longer freeze the lifetime duration of enhanced buff effects. For minions, fix an issue where land minions would sometime ignore enemy gods that entered their line of sight. The Draugr added a global death sound, which I think is very helpful. Reduced the volume of his intro and death sounds. Fixed an issue where his knockup ability could still CC targets who were CC immune or knockback immune. Draugr is Boon, increase the amount of damage mitigation that structures receive from this buff from 5% per stack to 7% per stack, so that's going from 15% to 21%. Well, that is going to be the end of this 8.8 .8 patch notes. I will be uploading some Charybdis gameplay over this next coming week. I'm gonna play her in carry, jungle, maybe solo, probably not support, maybe mid lane. We will see how it goes. I will also be covering a lot of the skins coming out in the Odyssey event, so be sure to check out the channel and subscribe for all that content. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps these videos out. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.